Our next speaker is going to talk about something we all enjoy. We're going to look at the first aid for bee stings. And the person who's going to talk to us has been keeping bees for 53 years. I suppose he's had a sting. He's the executive on the ABA and has been a member of the Parramatta ABA since its inception. Being a member of St John's Ambulance Brigade for 38 years, all of the above gives him great qualifications to give us this talk today on first aid for bee stings. So we're running a few minutes ahead of schedule, so I hope Arthur Garski is here to start his talk. Are you Arthur? Arthur? Hey! <laughs> It is really amazing what you can't see from here. Right, good morning everyone. What I'm going to talk to you today about, um, we as beekeepers, if you keep bees, bees sting and beekeepers get stung. If you don't want to get stung, don't keep bees because in spite of wearing get closer, right? In spite of wearing all the gear in the world, um, until you get used to bees, um, there'll be a time when you haven't got the gear on and out of the sky will come the kamikaze and um, hang out of your ear or between the eyes or some tender spot. So you need to know what to do. Um, generally, with the public, the cause of um, the widespread fear of, of anaphylaxis, um, people uh, are dead scared of bee stings because you only hear of um, what happens to a very minor percentage of people, um, anaphylaxis. And when people get stung, um, the natural reaction to the bee sting is swelling. Um, and it hurts. Uh, I know a lot of people say to me, oh, you've been stung that many times, you don't feel it. And I said, believe you me, the last bee sting felt as bad as the first bee sting I ever got you don't become immune to the stings. It's just the, um, the after effects. So um, people believe that because at the sting site they get swelling, um, that they uh, are gonna be anaphylactic. Um, it's a natural thing when you get stung um, that um, you do swell, that, that is a reaction uh, because your body um, makes histamine um, and that's why if you just have a general type reaction of swelling, redness, itchiness um, and this can last for a few hours, or it could last for up to seven days. Um, and that's just a natural reaction to your bee sting. So, yeah, what happened there? What is the difference between highly allergic and a sensitivity to bee venom? Well, um, people that are highly allergic, um, you know, they can get a bee sting and in a very short time uh, they can start to go into anaphylaxis. But you can have a sensitivity to bee venom where you're, um, you react a little bit more than people um, that have a normal type reaction. So if you get stung on the hand uh, your hand might swell up like it looks like a rubber glove that's been blown up with air 
and your fingers are poking out, look like milking teats on a cow with this great udder, you know? Well, that can last for several days. Well, if you have a reaction like that, the thing to do is to go to your doctor and um, he'll give you a prescription for a steroidal um, uh, medication and um, that'll, that'll take care and, and put the swelling down. Um, so that's called a, a sensitivity to bee venom. Um, with continual, you, you get stung, um, your reaction usually gets less. Um, so, but the thing, if you react like that to start with, you need to go to the doctor um, and you need to um, get him to give you a prescription uh, for that steroidal uh, medication. So the normal reaction, you just get swing at, stinging at the site and as I said, this can continue for several hours or in some cases for seven days. Um, it, it'll always become itchy, turn a dull red and become itchy and then eventually the itchiness goes. I've noticed with me, if I get a lot of bee stings, um, I get very thirsty. Um, and that's a bodied reaction to shock. So my system doesn't like it. So I'll drink anything and everything. Uh, so when I go to my bees, I always make sure I've got a 10 litre bottle of water um, with ice in it, preferably. <laughs> and. I drink copious amounts of water. Um, and when you finish working your bees, uh, when you get home, or if you're out in the bush, um, you'll drink anything and er everything that's cold um, and it'll slake your thirst, but you never seem to get over it. But the next day, I'm back to normal. Um, So the people that suffer that higher than normal reaction, uh, they have to watch because that can then progress into a state where they can become anaphylactic. But the signs um, hang on we go. To indicate that high sensitivity um, is is more swelling um, distant from where you've been stung. So, if you get stung on your hand and and you're heading towards an anaphylactic type reaction, you won't swell at the hand. You'll swell up on the body. The eyelids will swell up that much that. Uh, you've only got little tiny slits and the lips come up like lubras um, or you bangy tribesmen, really big pouting lips and, and to look at the person, uh, they look like they've had a fight with Mike Tyson and he punched him in the head 99 times, um, you know. So it's not just one sign, it's you've got to have at least two to three of these other signs which tells you that person is heading for an anaphylactic reaction. So it's the eyelids, the lips, um, the swelling is always distal, or distal means away from, uh, the sting site. Um, they will <coughs> develop a <coughs> like they're trying to clear their throat because what it does it attacks your your bronchial tubes and and they become restricted so your intake of air um, is tight so people tend to want to cough <coughs> and try and clear their throat 
so they can get more air into them. And the worst part, uh, if you take that person's pulse, it becomes weak and very thready. So instead of having a, a regular pulse uh, that is strong and firm, it um, starts to slow down and it, you've really got a feel for it. So if, if you're feeling for a radial pulse, oftentimes you won't get it, so you've got to go for the carotid because the body shuts down from the extremities and comes back to the heart and the brain. So, um, what did bee venom? So those signs are unmistakable. Uh, if anyone exhibits uh, those signs, you can see it, and it's usually um, in a very short time. So it doesn't have to be a bee sting that causes this. Um, it could be a reaction to a plant or something that people eat. But when you see them, you know straight away this person is, is crook. So uh, you've got to think fast uh, and act quick. So uh, the thing to do with people that know they're anaphylactic, they normally carry uh, an EpiPen, uh, which has got a measured dose of adrenaline in it. And that adrenaline uh, is intramuscular. So it's always given into the thigh because that's a big muscle. Um, the, the EpiPen is easy to use. Once you take the cap off the end of it, it's loaded. You just hold it, put it into the thigh, and then um, click in goes the metered dose. You only hold it there for three seconds and then take it off. Um, and you should see that person will start to exhibit better sign uh, within a short period of time. With those people, after you've given them the EpiPen, uh, they will react um, in, in a good way in a short space of time. If, however, uh, they don't, we, if anyone's got another EpiPen or you've got two, well, don't be frightened to give a second dose. Um, and it, they make an EpiPen for children, which hasn't got as much, but you can still use an adult pen um, for children if you haven't got a, a children's one. So knowing what to do um, the only other thing if you haven't got an EpiPen you really need to uh, be good at doing CPR because uh, unless you get that adrenaline into them um, they eventually they're going to stop breathing their heart's going to stop so you've got to do good CPR but the percentage of people that suffer from that anaphylactic reaction is only 0.2 to 0.3 of a percent. Uh, I think there was a, a study done um, and it went from here, this one here. 0.3 to 0.5 percent of the population can suffer from anaphylaxis. Nevertheless, it's a serious problem accounting for at least one death per year in Australia, 40 per year in America. In Australia between 1980 and 1990, there were 20 deaths from bee stings and 19 from lightning strikes. So that, that tells you there's, uh, that fear of anaphylaxis is unfounded. Uh, if you think you're that way inclined or you're frightened, well, you can go to see your doctor and he'll give you a prescription where you can buy your EpiPen and the prescription will cost you $38 and you can actually get two EpiPens. If you only ask for one at the chemist, they'll only give you one, but you can get two for $38. 
um, and they will last for 12 months. Um, and if you have that severe type reaction, well, it, it, it pays to actually carry your own EpiPen in case you get stung, because you can get stung anywhere. Um, you don't have to be working with your bees. Um, so, armed with all this knowledge, these, this picture is your bee sting. When you get stung, uh, the idea is to scratch it out as quickly as possible. Don't try to grab it, but if your hands are full of bee frame or something, you just scratch it on the side of the box. Um, anything that you can scratch it on um, to get that sting out quickly. Because the sting acts, it's got two barbs, and down the centre is the hypodermic, and on the end, um, oh, that is um, the, the sack of poison which keeps pumping, and what happens, the barb hooks into your flesh, grabs pu purchase to allow it to crank this one down, and then that hooks in, and then this one goes down, that hooks in, and then the hypodermic is following along, and that on the end is pumping the poison. So the quicker you get it out, the less volume of, of bee venom that you get in you. Um, and uh, if it goes in a fair way, when you scratch it out, you actually snap off that chitlinous sting, and that part stays in your, in your hand forever, never comes out. Um, and how I know this, I had to get an x-ray to get something in my finger uh, to find it, to get it excised and cut out. And the people that did the x-ray came back to me and said to me, do you work with metal? And I, thought, I said, no, I work with chemicals actually. And they said, well, there's all these things, there's hundreds of these things in your hand and it looks like little metal particles. And I was thinking, and I thought, oh, they're bee stings. So that's how I know those bits get left behind. Um, so armed with this, there's not much more I can tell you, uh, except I can give you a couple of little tips. If your bees are confined um, in their hive through bad weather for two or three days, and you won't read this in any books, but the toxicity of their sting uh, goes up about tenfold. So if you've been wanting to open your bees up and the first fine day that comes you say, right, I'm going to look at them bees, don't. Let them fly for a day or two and then look at your bees because after their confinement, when those stings hit you, I find nine times out of ten you get a little blood blister and it feels like they're injecting molten lead into you. So uh, uh, it's, um, that's just a, a, a thing to be aware of. And the other thing that you need to be aware of, when you gear up with all the gear in the world on and you're playing with your bees, and if the bees are a bit stingy and they sting your suit uh, or your gloves or whatever, when you go home, if you just take them off and throw them in the corner of the laundry for your good wife to wash, um, or if the kids get in there playing around, moving things around, they can become allergic to bee venom because the bee venom is actually in your clothing. So it dries. So uh, what I do when I come home from playing with my bees, um, I go to the laundry, peel off all my clothes, throw them in the washing machine, use a neutral soap, start the process, and then I go and have a shower um, and get changed into something comfortable. But I don't want my wife uh, to become allergic to bees. It's bad enough having to put up with, um, we don't argue about anything except bees. Uh, and I've been married for 52 years, and my wife says to me, if I'd have known you were going to keep bees, I would have never married you. <laughs> so, uh, 
you know, the last thing you want is for her to become allergic to bees. So um, there's not a lot more I can tell you um, about, oh, with, with your normal reaction, you can put on a ice pack or you can buy a thing called Stingos, which is aluminium oxide and it's cooling and it, it helps to make it feel better. But I find uh, just to put some ice in a plastic bag, wrap it in a hanky or something and put that on and, and uh, that takes the sting, uh, the pain away, it deadens it. Um, and and uh, just soldier on. The, the hardest part for me is when you have the breakup over winter time when you're not playing with bees, the first few stings uh, that you get in the springtime, um, they really hurt. Uh, but then I, I think, well, I'll be right for the rest of the season now. I've got the, the, the worst stings I'm going to get over. And then after that, they don't feel as bad. Um, so uh, if you've got any questions, no, no questions? Yeah? It's question time. There we are. You could put a, a light compression bandage over the sting side and up the arm, uh, which would re restrict the lymphatic system um, where the poison will travel. Um, and that, uh, that can help to slow down the, the spread of the venom put an ice pack on, put an ice pack on the back of the neck and over the sting side, if you bandaged it, wet the bandage down so the, the cold can transmit through the, the bandage um, onto the arm. But as I said, if you haven't got any of those things, you've just got to monitor your, your casualty, keep taking the pulse, doing your observations and uh, uh, once the, the system collapses, well, you've got to do CPR. So if you can do good CPR, you'll keep them going until the paramedics come, and um, then they'll hit them with the um, adrenaline, um, and, and it, it does a really quick reversal. So unfortunately, in Australia at one stage, you used to be able to buy a, it was called a medihaler, uh, EPI and it was made by Riker. If you know someone in America, they still sell them in bee shops over in America and they're only worth about 14 or $15 American and they, they look just like a Ventolin puffer, only they were white and they had powdered adrenaline in them and you know, they were really good because with an EpiPen you just get one shot and then, you know, it's useless. Uh, but with one of those, you could have a puff, breathe it in deeply, and um, if things didn't improve all that much, you could have another puff, so, uh, and another puff. And then, oh, one thing I didn't say, with children, uh, a lot of these signs you might not see except for the eyes swelling up and the lips, but they become pale and floppy, um, like a rag doll. Um, so, you know, we say in St. John, you, you say the rosary in bloody shorthand, um, and uh, hope when you ring up the ambulance, you tell them that someone is having an anaphylactic reaction, um, and they get, paramedics there really quick. Um, so, uh, you know, usually uh, it, it's within a 10 minute time limit or less than. Uh, they'll get someone there really quick. Even if it's one of their mobile cars where they have a professional guy in it and he races to the scene before the ambulance gets there. So uh, the thing to do is, is to tell them what's happened and that the person is going into anaphylaxis and they'll get someone there really quick, at least in the city, in, in, the, sub, in the country. 
Um, you, you either got to have an EpiPen um, or um, be able to do good CPR. It's called a, it's called a mini haler, EPI, and it's made by Riker, R-I-K-E-R. So if you know someone in America, <laughs> they should be able to buy it for you and post it out. Um, and I don't think it, it's um, anything that's, um, they, they get you for dealing with drugs or <laughs> anything like that. Um, but they used to sell it here uh, in Australia. Um, and I think the reason why they gave it away, early in the piece, that used to be used many, many years ago for people that suffered from uh, asthma. And that was the early, early, early thing that asthmatics used to use, was that powdered adrenaline, um, because it opens up your airway. Um, but there wasn't the, the, the sales number here. That's why in America they still sell it, because they've got millions of people compared to our little mob we've got over here. Um, and, and that's the reason why it was taken off the market. Um, it wasn't worth their time marketing it, keeping it. It wasn't moving. But for beekeepers, it was really good. Well, well, uh, that tells you you're um, you're sensitive to the bee venom, um, or uh, starting to get super sensitive. Uh, but just having the hives, uh, if you had the hives and the swollen eyelids and the hives and the lubra lips, um, yes, uh, you're going into anaphylaxis. But if you've just got the hives, you can get that um, when you, your hand or your arm swells up, uh, like someone blew it up with air and your fingers are poking out like little milk and things off the end of it, um, that's um, time to go to your doctor and, and, and get a, a steroidal medication. You can take antihistamine tablets, put on an ice pack, put on Stingos, uh, and when you go to see your doctor, um, he then might say, oh, well, we need to look at you a bit more closer and see uh, whether you could be heading towards anaphylaxis and then as such uh, give you the prescription to get the EpiPen. Well, there's no, there's, there's no dangers danger to using an EpiPen um, because um, uh, it, it's not going to kill you um, and it, all it does is, is um, uh, make sure you've got a patent airway and, and keep your heart beating regularly. Your heart rate might go up a little bit uh, but it's not going to kill you. It'll, it'll keep you alive. So that's, that's what the adrenaline does. Um, it opens up your airway and, and uh, keeps the clock ticking over. Okay? No more? Thank you very much.